Dr. Derek Sherman is with us now. Um, he wrote this past year a book entitled uh, Shaping, a Digital, uh, Shaping a Digital World, and um, it is a great book on faith, culture, and computer technology, and we thought we would have you back. And there are three things that I just want us to look at in this segment if we can. I'd yeah. like to talk about what happened with this Sony hacking story that we heard so much about related to the motion picture, related to all kinds of international uh, cyber bullying, mm -hmm. the whole cyber security issue as well that, that, that's going on with companies and um, big box chain stores, et cetera. And then I also want to just talk about for our audience, uh, I'm curious about personal security. What can we do to make sure okay. that all of those passwords and everything we have is, is current? So what, what, happened with the, what, what happened to Sony? Well, um, it's not completely certain, but they did have a ton of data, terabytes of data that was uh, downloaded from their websites, which included a lot of personal information, emails, information about employees, about salaries, social security numbers, all kinds of really sensitive personal information. And if you actually watch the news, this is, this is a sequence of different uh, uh, news items that have sort of highlighted the vulnerability of a lot of our data that's sort of stored on servers and increasingly in what's called the cloud. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and if those systems are not secured or there are determined people who want to gain access to that, um, a lot of our information can be very vulnerable. This is a, a big issue. And the these world. are oftentimes, uh, we, we believe, uh, we're being told at least that there are nations mm -hmm. that are actually committing uh, cyber terrorism. Nations, there's corporations spying on other corporations, and sometimes it's a simple teenager in their bedroom who's trying to um, yeah, hunt up to no good. So, it, and, but it's hard to tell when, when an attack is underway, whether it's a, it's a teenager in their bedroom or a nation state uh, what, initially. What's our response when we hear from stores like Target, uh, recently I think Chick-fil-A in the United States, mm -hmm. some of their things have been compromised, mm -hmm. where our credit cards are being used. How, yeah. how concerned should we be about those kinds of things? It seems frightening. Yeah, and, and, and I think credit card companies and banks tend to stand behind and, 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 uh, and, and, and deal with those situations when they come up. But I think as, as individuals, we need to really be careful about the kinds of sites that we visit, the, the, the way that we use our information. Uh, there needs to be trust when, 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 we, when we do online transactions. I teach computer science students, and so part of what we teach is the ethical and moral responsibility that information technology professionals have to properly secure data. I mean, part of loving your neighbor is to care for their data and their personal information in an appropriate way. And so that's, that's part of the, the moral and ethical aspect of we it. We should mention that you are a, a, a professor at Redeemer University College in mm -hmm. Ancaster, Ontario, just really down the highway from yep. us in our studios here. And you're so kind to come and help us on technology issues. Um, let me move into the world of personal security. Mm -hmm. um, our bank accounts, online uh, mm -hmm. purchases, credit cards. What can you advise us to do as consumers who simply want the convenience mm -hmm. of uh, being able to make a purchase on, t on Amazon and have something right. delivered to our homes? I think it just goes back to some general practices that are really, really helpful to help us to, you know, um, to, to, to safeguard our, 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 our information. And, and some of it is just simple, you know, installing proper anti-malware software, making sure that our software is always kept up to date. Now when you say anti-malware, that's M-A-L? Yes, anti-malware. Anti-spyware, anti-virus software um, is a good prevent preventative measure. Uh, having strong passwords uh, for different websites, having unique passwords for every unique site, so mm -hmm. that if one is compromised, you don't you don't lose access. Lose everything. You lose everything. Um, and one of the things that a lot of uh, people are using nowadays is something called phishing attacks with a PH phishing, where they actually send you an email that appears to be from your bank, but it's actually from someone who's after your information, and they'll include an embedded link that will take you to a website that looks like a legitimate website, but will be set up for the purposes of harvesting your username and password. All fraud. So, all fraud. So it's let's say we get something from a well-known bank where we have our checking and savings mm -hmm. accounts. Maybe we have some investment money there. Mm -hmm. Should we call the bank first to see if that's legitimate? We, we, do we have to take these extra steps now? I think it's prudent not to click on these sorts of links, but just to go visit your bank website the, the way you normally would through your mm -hmm. browser, through, 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 the, through, through the proper sort of uh, approach. Rather than clicking on these links from especially unsolicited emails, it, it, it's hard to be certain whether or not they're legitimate. Uh, what do you do as a... As a um, 
as someone, let, let me just talk about sensitivity to passwords. I don't want to give anything mm -hmm. away, but with, part of the frustration of having different accounts is keeping up with, mm -hmm. and, you, and you suggest different passwords. Yes. Um, you almost have to have uh, a, to be secure in where you place the passwords in case you forget them because yes. with, I'm not that great with numbers. I'm the opposite of you in that, in, in that area. What, what do we do to make sure that we are able to have those passwords accessible yes. and at the same time and private in a way? Yeah. I, you know, especially when passwords need to get longer, you know, 10, 12, 14 characters. You know, <laughs> how, how do you remember all this? And you want to avoid standard dictionary words yeah. and, and so on. Um, one mnemonic technique that I often use is I'll think of a sentence or a song and I'll use the first letter of each word and sort of string that together. And so that, that's a mnemonic technique um, to try yeah. and, you know, keep long sequences of characters right. in, in, in your head. And of course you want to mix them with numbers and punctuation and these sorts of things. Um, and then, yeah, just securely storing all your passwords to all your different services, but not taping it on a piece of paper on your monitor, right? <laughs> Putting it somewhere safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, how often should we change our passwords uh, for the, the most common things that we're, we're, yeah. we're at every day or every other day? Yeah, the, some sites will actually prompt you to change your passwords on a regular basis. Um, and we should not be aggravated by that. Yeah, it, it's an attempt to try and keep things secure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so I think we need to be regularly kind of doing that on occasion. Um, but if you have a strong uh, password that's many characters, it, it's probably secure for quite a while. Yeah. Large passwords take a long, long time to crack. Yeah. Any other advice you could give us in our final seconds here? Yeah. I think, you know, we're always kind of aware of some of these external attacks, but I think one of the things in the digital age, and, and I write a bit about this in the book, is that how our personal sort of digital habits and rituals with these machines also have a way of shaping our internal lives. Mm -hmm. And these are sort of the other aspects that I think we need to be aware of when we're using computers, is sort of how they affect and shape the way we relate to each other and, and how they shape our hearts. Yeah, you do a great job of this. The book is Shaping a Digital World, and the author is Derek Sherman, and um, it is available on our eStore. We hope that you'll get it, and you can go to Crossroads 360 to see another interview that I did with him related to these bigger matters as to worldview and how we as Christ followers should respond appropriately in a digital era. Thanks, it's great to have you back. Yeah, Come and see us again and again. I'd love to. I'm sure yeah. we're gonna have more stories like this oh, in I'm the sure future. there will be. All right. <laughs>